There are efforts to stop people from voting. That's not right. This is not Russia. This is the United States of America. That was the late Congressman Elijah Cummings, who passed away almost a year ago in October of 2019. Now we're learning much more about him with the posthumous release of We're Better Than This, his autobiography. The son of sharecroppers, Cummings rose to prominence representing Maryland's 7th Congressional District, becoming a champion for civil rights, the underserved, and the principles of good and fair government. I had a chance to sit down with Cummings' widow, who helped shepherd his autobiography to completion about his extraordinary life. And that was when his mom got to meet the president. Oh. She was ecstatic. Maya Rocky Moore Cummings spent most of 2020 reminiscing. Uh, and actually, that's me with President Clinton. Finishing the book started by her late husband, Baltimore Congressman Elijah Cummings. Did they have a good relationship? He actually, he actually liked George W. as a person. He didn't love his policies or his politics, but he liked the man. It's not about not liking the president. It's about loving democracy. We're Better Than This is less memoir, more rebuke of the partisanship Cummings wrote coming out of the White House. Uh, we have a leader who's intent on dividing people uh, by race, by class, by religion, by gender. Uh, we have a nation that seems to be in turmoil over police brutality uh, and certainly uh, disrupted by the, uh, the economy that has been affected by COVID-19. From the president's policy decisions... We will not intentionally separate children from their parents. We will not do that. We are better than that. To the misdeeds of Mr. Trump's closest aides, indicted or convicted of felony crimes. When we're dancing with the angels, the question will be asked, in 2019, what do we do to make sure we kept our democracy intact? Each chapter from the late chair of the House Oversight Committee weaves a treatise on why Cummings felt Mr. Trump should be voted out of office. But he firmly believed that what we're undergoing right now as a nation between the two parties uh, is asymmetrical warfare. It used to be uh, that the Republicans claimed that the Constitution was one of their highest values. And yet what we saw is a Republican Party that was only willing to stand in defense of their own power. In the beginning, Cummings writes, he tried to find common ground, attending Mr. Trump's inauguration when others didn't, meeting in private with him in hopes of compromising on the Affordable Care Act and the high cost of prescription drugs. Those people are living in hell in Baltimore. Donald Trump basically ended up not just turning his back on Elijah, but also denigrating him as a leader. Because all that money that's been spent over 20 years has been stolen and wasted by people like Elijah Cummings. Those attacks on Cummings and his hometown cemented his belief the president was racist. Elijah loved the place. Baltimore, it hurt him that the president of the United States of America would attack a United States city and act as if it were undeserving. The son of preachers, Cummings describes his childhood in this once segregated city. At eight years old, though, he heard some famous words. We must say, give us the ballot. We are determined to have the ballot and we are determined to have it now. He was inspired by the man and the movement he led. He saw the transformative power of it in his own life. A transformation that continued when he marched alongside lawyer activist Juanita Jackson Mitchell to integrate Baltimore's city pools. She led those kids on a several day march from their little segregated pool to the Riverside Pool in South Baltimore, where the kids were stoned by white adults, but they got in that pool and they integrated it. And continued with another woman, his political mentor, Lena King Lee. She was a Maryland state legislator and she wanted to find a female attorney to follow her into the state legislator, but she couldn't find one. So she approached Elijah 
She told him she was looking for a female attorney. He said he would try to help her find one, but she was just like, no, you'll do. Did he ever ask why me? I believe uh, he asked what she saw in him, and she indicated that um, his willingness to, to serve uh, other people uh, was what inspired her. Do you still feel him here? I feel him every day. I am surrounded by Elijah Cummings. The two met more than 20 years ago after Rocky Moore Cummings interviewed the freshman congressman for her doctoral dissertation. She later became a policymaker before they connected romantically. It was a dance. But, you know, uh, from 1998 to 2005, we just developed a very strong friendship. From 2005, it became a committed relationship, and we got married in 2008. For Maya Rocky Moore Cummings, the last two years have been a whirlwind. She bowed out of Maryland's gubernatorial race to care for her husband, published his book after his death, underwent a double mastectomy, and then lost her bid for his vacant congressional seat. Yeah, it's been a rough time. How are you making it through? You know, I have faith in God. Now she's looking beyond, and like her late husband, has faith in what could lie ahead. He wanted the American people to uh, call on their higher beings, uh, their inner angels, uh, to understand that we don't have to go through this. We deserve better than this, and we are better than this. All we have to do is make our choice to be better. And you know, so much of uh, Elijah Cummings' uh, legacy is, is part of the uh, Elijah Cummings uh, foundation for youth. And there are so many people that have come out of that, that program in terms of helping them find their leadership, helping them move into college. Uh, 20 years down, and it has, you know, hundreds and hundreds of kids uh, that have become adults. That some are on television, some are, you know, in a, a political office. So it's just an amazing, it's an amazing thing to see. It's how the legacy lives on. It's and what does. strength she shows. It's always so difficult when someone's unable to finish a book when they're alive, and then the burden that falls on family and relatives to uphold that legacy and tell the story they wanted to, the way to tell it. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Great still, still tough for her. Yeah.